Hey, how's it going? My name is Pat Kupo and I'm an Ableton Live instructor at Jobspot New York City. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about routing MIDI to a drum rack, which is probably very different from what you're normally doing with drum racks, but check this out. Normally you would create a MIDI track and get drum rack on there and then start selecting some different sounds. I just happen to have four ready to go here. I'm just going to drag them onto the MIDI track drum rack. These sounds come from the flat pack library, which you can buy from Ableton's website. It's one of those partner instruments. All right, very cool. So okay, I got these four sounds. They sound like this: kick drum, clap, hi hat, clave. I think that clave is going to be loud once I start programming notes. Normally, you create a MIDI clip, and you have draw mode activated, and you start drawing in a beat. Let's just go ahead and press play on it while I'm. While I'm drawing stuff in. Maybe pan these out a little bit. Okay, you might be happy with that, and that's totally fine. But what I like to do is I like to play around with the transposition of these sampler instruments. This is called Simpler. It's a sampler instrument. Whenever you drag a sample from the browser into the drum rack, what you get is a simpler. All right, so all four of these pads have simpler on it, each with its own sample. So if I want to play around with this, uh, this transposition here, I kind of have to do it manually. Push that orange triangle right there to go back to zero. Okay, so here's a different way of doing it. I'm going to create a MIDI track. Okay, I'm just going to drag it before the drum rack over here. And I'm going to rename it hi-hat because we're going to redo the hi-hat part. Now with this clip, I'm going to option drag it, holding down option or alt on a PC, dragging this over here, and it creates a copy of that of that clip. So I'm going to go into the original clip, I'm going to delete all of the hi-hat stuff. And in the new clip, the copy, I'm going to delete everything that wasn't the hi-hat. Okay, so press play. Don't hear the hi-hat anymore. Got to do a few things to make this work. I'm just drag this down, bring up my I.O. section, my ins and outs. And what I want to do is I want to send this MIDI information to the drum rack. Okay, this is how you do it. Go to your output type and send it to the drum rack that you're talking about and then you go to the output channel and send that to the chain that you're talking about all right so I, I've sent that MIDI to drum rack and to this chain here this hi-hat chain so what do you think is going to happen once I play this is that what you thought was going to happen the hi-hat is not the same pitch that we originally heard it at check this out I'm going to go into my drum rack bring up my chain list and my I.O. section of the drum rack and we can see here the MIDI out note that the original pitch of the sample was set at C3, MIDI note C3. In this MIDI clip over here we can see it's at D1 right now so it's lower than its original pitch. I'm going to unfold this, bring this up a little bit and I'm going to hold down shift now that all of these notes are selected. Hold down shift, press up a couple times and that's going to go up a couple octaves to D3. All right. Now I'm going to go down two MIDI notes to C3, and now everything should sound at its original pitch. I'm going to deactivate draw mode, and while this is playing, I'm going to move these MIDI notes around and see what happens. Alright, so let me solo that hi-hat part. You can see that I'm making a little melody out of the hi-hat part. Which is basically the same thing as going in here and changing this transposition. Maybe I'll do the same thing to the clave part. I'm just going to go in and create a new MIDI track. Rename it clave. Alright, 
Uh, I'm just gonna option drag this clip, get rid of everything that wasn't the clave part, and then in the original clip, get rid of the clave part. All right, same thing. Send this to the drum rack with the output type and the output channel to the clave. Again, this is going to be at a different pitch. But actually, I kind of like it there. I'm just gonna unfold this and maybe make a little melody out of out of the clave part. All right. So as you can see, these two MIDI tracks are sending MIDI to the drum rack to the appropriate chains. And since this is a drum rack, I can still go in and maybe put an audio effect in there. Maybe like a ping pong delay on the clave. All right, so that's how you change the pitch of MIDI notes in a drum rack by sending MIDI to the drum rack. All right, and last thing I like to do is just group this all together so I have it all in one group track. Little house cleaning tip. Okay, so that's how it works when you're building it from scratch. Let me just show you a few different scenarios. First one with drums again, but um, some different stuff going on. Check this out. If I push play in this kick track, follow action going on. Now, of course, you can have follow action going on in your drum rack track, but if you do that, you are affecting all four of the sounds at once. All right. I like to have it on just one sound, and then I can separate all my sounds into different follow action settings. So if I press play on all of these, You can see that there's follow action set up on each individual sound. Other things going on, let's look inside of the clips. I know that this clip in the hi-hat part is in uh, time signature 916. Everything else is in 4-4. Of course, you can go in here and change this time signature to whatever you want in the clip, but it would affect the entire clip. All right, so uh, this is just this one clip here. I know that this clip here is set up in a triplet grid. Um, of course, you can do that again over here, but you kind of have to keep switching back and forth between triplet grid and the regular grid. Also, um, I know that all of these clips have different groove settings. So if I go to the groove pool, I know there are four different grooves in here, and I can set them up individually instead of just one groove per clip, which would affect all of the sounds in that drum rack. Okay? So... That's the advantage to having it, things separated out. You can have MIDI sent to the drum rack and have the best of both worlds, individual tracks and the drum rack. You get things like macros set up, so I can play that with all my tracks separated out. I got my APC40 next to me. I'm just gonna play around with these settings that I set up. Very subtle settings. And as you can see again, best of both worlds, individual tracks and the drum rack together. All right, that's one scenario. Another would be with Slice to Do MIDI track, which is known for using drum rack. Okay, so I have, I'm not gonna show you the slicing that I did. Here are the four slices though. It's oh so cool. Maybe you know the song from those four samples, but those are my four slices. All right, and I've separated it out to four different MIDI tracks again. All four of these are going to drum rack two, drum rack two, and slice one, slice two, slice three, and slice four. All right, four different slices over here. By doing that, I can, let's say, press play here. I can take advantage of that transposition again, and make little melodies out of those individual samples. As you can see, it's all coming from this one track. As opposed to creating a clip here, Let's say I activate draw mode again and just start programming in some notes. All right. It would sound like this. Uh, kind of that machine gun effect, which is very cool. I love it. I've used it in the past, but not what I'm going for here. This is what I'm going for. 
different transpositions of that slice. Because again, we're dealing with sampler instruments. All right, it's like changing this transposition parameter. All right, whole thing would sound like this. Okay, so that's how it's set up in Slice to New MIDI track. That's where that S2 and MT is, Slice to New MIDI track. And then finally, melodic material. I like to keep things consistent with all of my tracks, so I'm also using this setup for melodic material. Uh, I got impulse, analog, operator. Uh, impulse, not really a melodic thing set up, more percussion, sound effect stuff, but... All right. But as you can see, uh, six samples here, two are empty, go to impulse. Six are full, two are empty. So it's just reading everything that's here very well in this MIDI clip over here. All right, analog over here. I have four note chords. So yes, you can play chords in this setup. All right, and operator over here is playing a bass part, just a little melody. Oh, bass part, melody. But again, with all follow action on individual tracks. Okay, so again, best of both worlds. Separated tracks and all of the properties of the clip with the flexibility and power of the drum rack. And all of that together sounds something like this. So there you go. Routing MIDI to drum rack can give you the best of both worlds, separated tracks and the drum rack. My name is Pat Kupo. I'm an Ableton Live instructor at DubSpot in New York City. Hope this tutorial was helpful, and thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.